Hey, what's going on, Visionaries? Jason Osborne, JL Vision, back again with another video. And today, we're talking about that money, man. All right, we're talking about how to price your photography, whether it be you shooting events, uh, family portraits, or fashion. I'm gonna give you some pricing plans for your own photography needs, so hopefully, you'll see more clients and more money. Coming up. Pricing your photography can definitely be tricky. Sometimes you just don't know what to charge for your photography. You know what you feel like you're worth, but knowing what you feel like you're worth and what you can actually get from clients that are in your area, the type of photography that you do, are totally two different things. And I think the first thing that you have to realize is what that is. What are people around you charging? What are professionals that have a lot more experience than you charging in the area that you live in? If you're trying to base your photography based off a random number in your head or what you think would be a good price for your work, that can only work for so long. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to have a set pricing regimen so you're gonna be prepared to offer a quote to any prospective client that comes your way. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can price your own photography and by no means is this a one-stop shop, do it all. You still might have to revise any of these plans that I'm going over, but these are the ones that I've considered for my own photography purposes and I've used probably one one of three of these at any given time uh, to help me uh, get clients in and to make sure that my time is being paid for. So the first method I'm gonna go to is called the session fee method, all right? Now, I only really recommend you use this method for pricing if you are established, have a solid base of clientele, and you really understand what it is to be a professional photographer. Um, you're getting clients probably on the weekly or monthly basis, and you're bringing in a good amount of income from your camera. Um, this will help utilize that, you make sure that your time is being paid for for every single second that you're working for your client. Um, so the session fee method basically is you are charging two separate fees, okay? You are basically going to be charging a base rate just for the time alone that it took you to take the picture. So for example, if you're shooting a portrait session with someone, you would charge, you know, and this is just random numbers they're throwing out there, maybe $100 just for the session fee. No pictures included from the session, just from that. Then after that, the client can then get a proof gallery. They can then go ahead and buy individual pictures from that session at a given price that you set beforehand. Now, this is a good way to make sure that you're being paid for every single second that you're working for your client. A lot of professional photographers use this method because it definitely utilizes their time the best. They don't have to edit pictures that aren't gonna be bought. And on top of that, they're getting paid for taking the pictures as well. But what are some of the cons of this? Well, the cons to this are that sometimes a lot of times the consumer customer not your specialty customer but the normal everyday average customer that's looking for you know basic family shoot or graduation photos they don't want to feel like they're paying too much money for their services sometimes it can draw customers away from you when they feel that wait I'm paying for you 200 250 just for you to shoot the photos but then I have to fork out another possible 50, 100, $200 per image just so I can get the photos? Nah, that's a little bit too much money for me. I'm gonna go to someone else that's offering an all-inclusive deal. Sometimes it can definitely scare customers away. Also, another con is a lot of times customers, especially if they know that the individual photos are pricey, they take a while for them to actually purchase the photos. So that back-end payment on editing and also getting those photos bought, unless you set a actual date where they have to pick by, um, can take a while. And that can definitely deter your methods as well because if you're always waiting for your clients to pick their photos and then to pay for them, you're gonna have a lot of data and memory being used up on your hard drive and no one wants that either, especially if you're shooting raw files. The second price plan I like to call is called the package deal. All right, and now that sounds exactly what it is. You're offering a package. The customer pays one base price, say $200 for a set amount of time and a set amount of images included, okay? So basically, if a customer comes to me, I could say, okay, for an hour shoot, I'll give you 200, uh, give me $200, I'll, I'll shoot you for an hour, and then you'll get 10 images included. This can be helpful because one, it allows you to really just make it easier on the customer to understand what they're paying. A lot of customers are drawn into this package deal because they have to pay one flat rate, not two, and it helps them save some money in the long run. 
Also, it allows you to be a little bit more easier as far as knowing exactly what you're gonna get paid and not having to worry about if people are gonna purchase photos on the back end. Another thing that's good about this pricing plan is that it's a very popular pricing plan. So it automatically puts you in the running as being competitive against your competition in the market. Um, you have a pricing plan, you're offering package rates. So say for example, a client goes to one photographer and they're talking and they're doing the first one where they have to pay for the time and the images separate and then they see yours, you're automatically gonna seem more appealing to that customer if that's what they're looking for because you have the plan ready to go. So some of the cons of this pricing method is that you can actually end up doing a lot more work that you were paid for. Um, if a client offer, you offer to give a client a shoot for a certain amount of time and then 20 edits, you know, it actually might take you more time to edit those photos and you can end up losing money in the long run. Um, pricing this is very tricky. You really have to understand, okay, what is my time management? If you don't have proper time management with this, you can end up doing a lot more work than you feel that you're getting paid for, and no one wants that. As a photographer, time is everything. Time to get to the location, time to set up your gear, time to shoot. You have to consider all that is time, and you have to make sure that the price that you set reflects that time, because if not, you're gonna be doing a lot more work than what you're getting paid for, and the customer, although the customer should be getting a good deal from you, is gonna get way more of a deal than you probably wanna give at the price point that you offered. Also, going back to time management, make sure you have a clause when it comes to revisions. Sometimes clients might want you to revise or do a couple edits over on your photography. And if you offer them this package deal, as soon as they do that and you've already been paid, now you are working for free. The last pricing method is what I like to call the hybrid. And basically you're gonna be taking the first one of the session time and the second one of the package deal and combining it together. How you do this is basically you charge a price that offers a package deal, but you limit the amount of pictures severely. So maybe for uh, an hour shoot, you're charging maybe $200 with an hour shoot with three or four images included. This will guarantee not one, you will be paid for most of the time and $200 should be enough of a time for you to edit those photos as well. They only end up taking those four or five, but also you are able to uh, command that if you do a good job, they most likely will purchase extra images for you. It can instantly turn a $100 job into a $300 job. There have been times where a customer has only selected maybe my base package, you know, something like 45 minutes for $150, you get four images included. But in that 45 minutes, we are able to get 25, 30 images that that customer actually really liked and they bought almost all of them at the set price that I gave. That definitely helps on the back end. Try to price your photography a little bit cheaper on the front end in hopes that you do a great job so they'll purchase, they'll purchase more pictures on the back end. That's always a great way to get extra money in your pocket from your photography. The cons for this is that sometimes the client, even though you did a good job, they simply just can't afford any extra photos and they only take the ones that were given in the package. But it's not really a con because if you think about it, you already got paid for the time that it's gonna take for them for you to shoot and to edit maybe the five or 10 photos that are coming with the limited uh, amount anyway. So you don't have to worry about losing on that. But sometimes a client occasionally will just say, okay, I'm good with my five photos. Thank you so much and keeps it moving. Say you don't take portraits, say you're not a portrait photographer, say you're a landscape photographer or an architectural photographer, someone that usually makes their money by selling their prints. I'm gonna give you some pricing for that as well. So pricing for your prints is pretty fairly straightforward, okay? What I would take account is the exclusivity of the of the area or location or building or wherever it is that you took, you know? If it's a popular tourist destination and everyone has pictures of this place on their cell phone or, you know, it's all, all over the internet and it's a really easy and accessible place to get to, uh, you probably are not gonna charge a lot of money for a print of that because anyone can just go on Google and print out their own for free. But if it's a place that takes a little bit of traveling to get to, takes a little bit of you know research to get to, is a uh, you know not really a known area or a known location, and you get a beautiful shot there, definitely consider that exclusivity into the price. Also, you want to just take into account the investment that it took to take the shot. You know how much was it? Where did you travel? How long the travel cost? Um, how long it took to set up the shot? Uh, you know, how much, how long it took to edit the shot? Are you gonna be framing these prints? How big are these prints gonna be? Once you have all those answers, then you want to then set a price, but then mark up that price to get a nice little profit on whatever prints you're selling. 
Now, for events, if you are an event photographer or you're trying to get into events, you might think about how you should charge for that as well. I shoot a lot of events. I shoot weddings, birthday parties, corporate events, etc., etc. Always charge by the hour, okay? You always wanna make sure that for every hour that you are shooting, or every hour of coverage, you are charging an hourly rate for that. Also, you wanna make sure that you are charging more if they only need you for a limited amount of time. So, for example, if a client comes to me and say, how much would you charge for one hour of coverage for this birthday party or one hour of coverage for this corporate event? I'm always gonna charge more than I would if they wanted to get a multiple couple hours for that hourly rate because I have to take into account the time it's going to take me to drive, set up my gear, shoot the event. By the time I do all that, that hour is going to be done. And if I'm only charging my normal rate, that's a lot more work than it would be uh, if it was spread out over a couple hours for that event. So make sure that you charge more if it's just a single hour and then give them a different rate if they get multiple hours of coverage. All right. Now, when it comes to picture distribution, I was thinking about it like this. If it's a small birthday party or a small event, small family thing, you know, you want to limit the amount of pictures you give them. So you can not only one, get some more money on the back end, but also you want to make sure that, you know, the word gets spread out and that it can actually open you up to new potential clients. So if I'm shooting a little birthday party, maybe 20, 25 people are in attendance. I will say I will give you 10 images or 20 images per hour of coverage that I am there. Now, if it's a huge corporate event and you're already making, they matched your max hourly rate that you thought you would never get paid for, then just give them the whole gallery. I say give them the whole gallery because editing for photography, event photography is a lot different than portraits and things like that. You barely edit photos like that. That's why it's so important to get them right in camera because it's gonna take a lot of time for you to edit 300, 400, 500, even plus uh, photos the way you would if it was a portrait session or anything like that. For event photography, you're not editing uh, every little pimple off people's faces. You're not retouching every single person. You're basically making sure the exposure, color balance, and a couple other things are correct, and then you go on to the next picture. For my event photography, I always make sure that I just adjust a few things and move on. I probably spend no more than a minute on each image when it comes to event photography because chances are I already nailed the shot in camera and it just needs a little more contrast, a little sharpening, and that's it, and on to the next one. People aren't expecting the glamour and the glitz of retouching and frequency separation and color grading when they when it comes to event photography they just want a great solid picture that they can post on their business website or on their corporate page or maybe just have it uh, in the group work company email so if you learned anything today please give me a thumbs up on the video if you have a comment question about your own uh, photography pricing please leave it in the comment section below I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have or give you any advice that I did not touch upon in the video. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I do appreciate all you visionaries that come back week after week to watch my videos. The channel is growing almost to a thousand subs. So please, 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 please recommend this channel to anyone. If you are a photographer, share the link, share the videos. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs by the end of the year. I'm not sure if it's possible, but hey, I'm letting that light hit me today. And I'm really, really, really staying positive. I'm thinking that I could probably do it in the next couple of months. So if you like this video, please subscribe, comment, share it. Uh, come back next week for next week's video. And I will see you guys later. This is Jason Osborne, JO Vision, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.